Welcome back to the Autoblog Podcast. I'm Greg Migliori. We have an awesome show for you this week. Uh, so with that, I will bring in senior editor for all things electric and green, John Snyder. How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, you know, just enjoying the the last little bit of summer, um, making the most of it before the kids go back to school, which, you know, will also be cool. But <laughs> Yeah, no, that's true. It's it's September's usually fun. A lot going on. And uh yeah, it's always uh, always an interesting time of year. Things change quickly, and then you wake up, and it's like November 1st. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We've been getting wild weather lately, too. So, you know, it really definitely feels like summer still. Uh, but, yeah, looking forward to maybe a little bit cooler weather, weather a little bit uh, less humid. <laughs> the humidity here in the upper Midwest has just been horrible and it's like i've sort of started to give up on just some of like the different yard work tasks oh yeah once the calendar says august you're like okay you know and uh i actually had my first sam adams Oktoberfest the oh, other nice. day so uh it tasted great it was a pretty warm summer evening but i was like you know what i think i'm ready for this maybe some cooler nights some football stuff like that so uh, i think i'm about ready for fall yeah of course yep and football season yep for sure pumped about that <laughs> yeah it's coming up it's coming fast it's like three weeks for college and like a month for the nfl so a lot going on a lot going on all right so we have a great show for you this week uh john just got back from driving the genesis gv80 coupe uh he also drove the ford explorer pretty recently i drove the jeep gladiator uh and we both drove the bmw 530i x drive uh close out the review section with uh some thoughts on the chrysler pacifica P-H-E-V, which it's been a while since I drove that, so that'll be a fun one. Got some news items on mid-cycle refreshes, some updates for the Nissan Frontier, and Toyota's GR Corolla. So with that, uh, I guess dealer's choice. You want to do Genesis or Ford Explorer first? Um, let's start with the Genesis. Uh, yeah. yeah, powertrain sounded pretty sweet. Oh, man, yeah. So, you know, obviously... Uh, it's the GV80 coupe, so new body style. But I think the bigger news is that you can get the uh, E supercharged uh, powertrain in it um, that they borrow from the G90. So 3.5 uh, twin turbo V6 um, is the, the, there's just two versions of that in it. So it, it sort of corresponds with the very top of the GV80 SUV lineup. Um, so you can get the regular. Uh, twin turbo v6 or you can get the e supercharge it, you know has the supercharger that's powered by uh, the 48 volt system so it spins up uh, nice and quickly um, and boy yeah that was really fun um, you know i i drove the uh, gv80 recently and um, you know still very nice suv uh, really uh, pretty luxurious well contented, um, drives pretty well. That that uh, V6 powertrain is pretty good on its own. Um, but yeah, then giving, getting into the coupe with the supercharged version, um, it, <laughs> it gets it gets pretty hot. Uh, let's see, it's um, it goes from let's see, it's 409 horsepower and 405 pound feet of torque up from 375 and 391 in the non-supercharged version. Um, interestingly, uh, the supercharged version also gets just a little bit better uh, fuel economy as well. But um, just having that, that supercharger on hand um, makes it really quick and really smooth, super linear acceleration. You know, it starts going as soon as you get into the pedal and the switch over from supercharged to turbocharged power is really seamless. Um, so it definitely feels very luxurious and smooth going down the road, especially with the electronically controlled suspension with the road preview. Um, but when you really wanna uh, play with it, 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 it steps up to it. And it's got, um, exclusive to the e-supercharged version is a Sport Plus mode. And um, boy, it is really well tuned. Um, it's you know uh, really good acceleration. Uh, they've got you know the better braking uh, feel in the uh, sport and sport plus mode. Um, a little heftier uh, steering. I kind of like the the steering in normal mode better. You can of course uh, 
make your own individual driving modes out of all these. Um, but the shift logic is just incredible. Um, if you're, you know, using the paddle shifters that will hold onto the gear if you hit the rev lim limiter, which is kind of cool. Um, if if you're not using the paddles, it's just really smart and it's shifting um, lots of good blips on the downshifts. Um, just and it sounds surprisingly good too. Um, you know, in things like you know the the X five M and uh, or X, let's say X six M. Um, in the past, I've sort of lamented that you can't really hear the powertrain. Um, it's they've gotten a little better with the updates. The the new X five M and X six M competition, you can definitely um, get more of that soundtrack in the cabin. But with the uh, GV eighty coupe, um, you get the sound uh, sort of amplified. It's piped in a little bit through the speakers, but it's not you know, some weird engineered sound. It's the actual uh, sound um, recorded from uh, the actual powertrain and just amplified a little bit. And it sounds really good, sounds really natural. Um, driving it around, you, you don't think it's piped in at all. It doesn't sound piped in and it gives you a little more feedback. You can turn it off if you want, want to be quieter. Um, it's not super loud um, either way. But uh, yeah, it just sounds really good. And when you're, um, you know, have it in sport plus mode and, and <laughs> flogging it down uh, little twisty roads uh, in, you know, the upper, you know, sort of near the Mississippi and, and uh, in Wisconsin, um, yeah, it gives you that good feedback and just sounds good, feels really good, um, really well controlled in terms of, uh, you know, wheel spin and things like that. Um, we drove it through a lot of rain too, and it was really well controlled there, but yeah, excellent car to drive. I like that, uh, they took the coupe and gave it a little bit of exclusivity with that, um, with the supercharged powertrain. Yeah. I think that's a really smart move. It's a good way to, uh, make the, the coupe variant special, gives you a reason to buy it, yeah. not just a slightly different silhouette and, you know, in most cases, less cargo space. Right. So I think that's a really nice way to give it some identity, make it something special that it's, uh, it's desirable. And, you know, I, I'm pretty stoked to drive this thing, uh, especially due to this power trade. And I think it looks great. Genesis design in recent years has been, it's been a little bit over the top, but I still think it's very attractive. Good looking, good looking vehicles. Yeah. It's, it's one of the rare crossover coupes where I think I like the coupe body style better than the the normal SUV body style. Uh, they just did some really good things with the design, especially in the rear. Um, it's just really nice silhouette, um, really nice shapeliness to it. Um, and, and then there's like little details when you get up and look close, like the, the grill and, you know, some of the trim and they, you know, hid the roof rails to give it that sleeker silhouette. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very good. And then inside, um, really nice interior. They have uh, this carbon fiber weave that has sort of a diamond shaped pattern that you know mimics the sort of mesh pattern that they use in the grill and then like on the jeweling on their touch gear, switch gear and, and, and stuff like that. Um, and it almost gives it this 3D effect under that laminate. It looks really cool. Um, and yeah, full of tons of content. The, the base uh, coupe is, you know, uh, equivalent to the very top of the line of the SUV. So it sort of justifies its price in that way. Um, and then, yeah, sitting in the rear seat, you don't lose that much headroom. I think there's about 0 0.8 inches less um, on paper, but Genesis did a really good job of, of preserving whatever headroom they could. They sort of carved out a cavity above above your head so as you you know sort of lean your seat back or whatever you uh you've always got space above your head and then the cargo cargo volume obviously you're going to lose some of that uh toward the load load floor part of the lift gate but back near the seats it's still pretty tall and it's got a nice uh wide footprint i think you'd be able to you would definitely be able to uh put a bunch of groceries in there it's got the cargo cover and that's about 
at the top of what a paper grocery bag would be. And uh, yeah, just that footprint um, of the floor is pretty large. So you could put a lot of stuff in there. Um, it's just when you get to stacking things up, um, especially uh, toward the lift gate that you might run out of room. Okay. I think generally speaking, it's it's been a minute since I've been a Genesis, in a Genesis vehicle, but I haven't been pretty much impressed yeah. with, uh, to some degree, whether a lot or a little. Uh, what's your kind of take on just the overall status of the brand? Um, man, they're, <laughs> they're really, uh, gaining some momentum. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they had some troubles early on, uh, establishing, you know, standalone dealerships and, you know, are we going to put this in a Hyundai dealership and that sort of thing. Um, but now they're, they're growing their dealership network. Uh, they're getting a lot more brand recognition. I think their design is just awesome it it really stands out it doesn't look german it doesn't look american doesn't look japanese it's its own thing and it looks really good um, so you don't feel like you're driving what everyone else is driving on the road and you don't feel like you're driving some sort of copycat and just the fact that they're able to put so much content in it and still keep it uh competitively priced compared to some of the other luxury brands um, is impressive. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, we start to see their prices creep up a little bit as they, you know, gain more of a following and uh, people realize, wow, these are you know, you know, bona fide luxury cars that are really good. Um, but for now, you know, it's still still sort of a value proposition, um, even yeah. even at like 80,000 um, when you compare it to similarly equipped, uh, you know, German competitors, especially, uh, you, you get a lot um, for your money, and it's all really good stuff. The tech works well. Um, you know, it's it's all really comfortable. The attention to detail in the materials and and you know the, the design is it's all really good. It's a good time, I think, to try to get into buy or lease a Genesis because you get. I mean, along with Hyundai and Kia, their sibling brands, you just you get a ton of stuff. More than if you were yeah. buying a BMW or even in some cases like a Chevy or a Honda, they still will chase value all day long. And I mean, in this case, it's such a you know well-equipped luxury vehicle. And to me, luxury is the spot where you pay for everything. Yeah, you know, I mean, get inside a BMW, look at the sticker, and realize just what you're paying for. It's it's definitely like ordering <laughs> off the menu a la carte without the pizza coupons. You know. Yeah. So it's. You know, I think Genesis vehicles are still a great value. Uh, that's a good thing. Yeah. And they've got more stuff coming down the line. I mean, we've seen some of those awesome concepts, those those X concepts that they've been coming out. They're starting to incorporate some of those design details into the cars they're making now. And, and I'm excited to see uh, more of what they create in the future because I think their design is just awesome. All right. So let's move over to the Ford Explorer. Uh, you know, one of the most well-known vehicles in history, at <laughs> least in the current version of the market. Uh, some substantive upgrades for the new model year. Uh, looking at it, you don't see a ton. I think the most obvious yeah. visual cue is the grill, mm -hmm. but some other stuff as you go deeper. Where did you drive the new Explorer? I drove it around here. Um, oh, right. Uh, okay. In the Ann Arbor area. We uh, met out in, in Chelsea and drove it okay. sort of out. It's a good place of, to drive. Yeah, those good, there's really good roads out there. Um, we did some highway driving. It now has uh, Blue Cruise. Um, it, it's a, every uh, 25 Explorer is equipped with Blue Cruise uh, equipment. Um, so you can pay the subscription fee if you want <laughs> to get it beyond the three-month trial. Um, and Blue Cruise is, is starting to work a little better. I think there's still quite a, quite a gap between that and uh, GM Super Cruise. I, I still just think... Uh, Super Cruise works a little better, is a little more seamless, has more roads that it works on, but Blue Cruise is improving um, more more roads than before, and uh, things like automatic lane changes, you just tap the turn indicator and it finds a spot um, if it's safe to change lanes and it'll do it for you, things like that. Um, so we drove a little bit on, on the highway with Blue Cruise, and then, you know, of course, around the little roads. We did a little bit of sort of off-roading, um, on the property that we were uh, staged at, um, nothing crazy, but 
it had rained a whole bunch the night before and that morning as I was driving out there. So I was able to get it a little bit muddy and slide it around a little bit. And then uh, we went out to, um, uh, I forget what it's called, it's the Shared Engineering uh, place out by Willing, Willow Run where uh, you know Toyota's got a presence there, uh, Ford, GM, all the presences there. And they set up a little autocross course uh, for, the, for the ST, the Explorer ST. So I got to drive that a little bit. Um, but yeah, drove both the, the, you know, there's two powertrain options. There's a 2.3 liter EcoBoost and the three liter EcoBoost. Um, the the 2.3 liter uh, sounds uh, a lot better than I remember it sounding. Um, I know they changed some of the internals and it has more in common with the, with the 2.3 in the Mustang now. Um, and I didn't really notice that it felt a lot different. Um, you know, it'd been a while since I sampled it, but it definitely sounded <laughs> really good, better than, you know, I'd expect from a four cylinder. Um, and then the three liter it is more powerful, um, by, 100 horsepower, but uh, it's also quieter. So I didn't quite notice as big of a difference just because you're not bombarded. Your senses aren't bombarded um, by the extra noise. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was it was good. It's solid. The, the biggest thing I think um, that's improved is the interior. The old Explorer, um, that was the the biggest sticking point for me was just the interiors were really sort of drab. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is much, much more improved. They, they, you know, completely redesigned the dash, um, added a lot more tech. Um, you can actually play video games in it. Now I was playing um, uh, asphalt nitro two with a wireless oh, controller. Okay. You can, you can hook up a Bluetooth Bluetooth controller to it <laughs> and play so so in your downtime you're seeing there and, and there's streaming services too um so you can watch movies or or youtube or whatever um but yeah it's just a way nicer place to spend time uh better design um speakers are sort of hidden um behind this fabric as sort of a like a sound bar across the dash is how i would describe it um uh, better materials um everywhere you touch uh, a lot less of that grainy black plastic in your face everywhere. Um, better places to set your phone, things like that. Just um, a, lot, a lot better place to spend spend time up front. Do you think, uh, where would you put it in the segment now? Because it's the Explorer has been, it's always been a huge volume model for Ford. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's also, you really laid out some of the weaknesses pretty well. It's also got some pretty big, shortcomings that i think people buy it because they're used to it because they're comfortable the power trades have usually been interesting mm -hmm. some people like the styling i could go either way on that uh but where do you think it ranks with these new enhancements <sighs> you know top I, five maybe <laughs> uh, maybe like toward the bottom of the top five i don't know i, I okay i, I still Fair like uh, some of the okay. other like smaller three rows better and the bigger three rows better um like you know, I I I like the fact that you can get a Sorento hybrid and plug-in hybrid. They don't your your only options are the two point three and the three liter EcoBoost as of right now, um, and they don't have um, yeah, you know, they don't have like the rugged sort of off roady uh, uh, trim level uh, yet. Hopefully they 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 bring that back because that that. That's always nice. Um, gives gives it a little more character, um, but yeah, it, you know, I I sat in all the rows, comfortable third row, especially if you have the the um, captain seats. Um, but then you know, six seats instead of you don't uh, instead of seven. Um, but uh, yeah, it's decent. It's it. I I would I would consider it depending on you know sort of what deals were available and what I was looking for I I do I I'm I personally like um, you know the hands free driving tech uh, I find myself using it whenever I have a, a car with that so I might um, that might be a, a 
an advantage. Um, if I were shopping for it, that might be something that could cause me to choose the Explorer over um, the competition. Okay. Uh, but uh, the fact that it's a subscription service is, you know, a little distasteful to a lot of people. Um, you know, it's it's eight hundred dollars uh, a year. Um, or you, you can do it monthly. You can go month by month. And if you're not going to be taking any road trips uh, for a couple months, uh, you don't have to pay for it. And, and just pay, I think it's $75 a month on the months that you'll want to use it. Um, but I, I personally like um, Blue Cruise quite a bit. I haven't driven in it that much. So that's that to me is something that if I you know, were a potential Ford buyer or leaser, I would probably want to get more familiar with it. Uh -huh. um, you know, but all right, well, let's uh, shift gears over to something that I just drove. And I actually, good news, my load was extended by one day. Uh, I forget why. Uh, maybe it showed up a day late, but that's the Jeep Gladiator. Nice. Uh, this thing is just, uh, it's just a party on wheels. It's so much fun. Uh, the one I drove is the, uh, the Mojave trim, Mojave X, uh, which is like just, ready to go conquer the desert it's <laughs> you know it's like army green uh sarge green i should say uh the price is actually more reasonable than i thought it's seventy one thousand three hundred twenty dollars. i thought it might be north of 80 yeah uh, but it's you know it's pretty loaded the options include like a about eleven hundred dollar 17 inch machined dark gray wheels it's got spray and bed lighter which i highly recommend yeah. uh cargo group with the like the rail system which is cool the roll-up tonneau cover is really nice i just got some groceries which make it the gladiator almost as functional as like you know a crossover an suv i'm still trying to figure out after a, almost a like a week with this thing how to really operate the roll-up tonneau cover like the little latches don't quite work intuitively so i may not jump off that bridge we'll see <laughs> it's just it's it's yeah but, you know, beautiful, you know, tough looking vehicle. Uh, I had the 3.6 liter V6 under the hood. That's turned 85 horsepower, the eight speed automatic. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's a gladiator. They can go anywhere and do anything with. It has been, I would say, multiple years since I have driven a gladiator. So to drive one uh, for the first time in a while reminded me of just how much fun it is. Yeah. I've driven the Wrangler several times since then so um you know but it's just getting inside the gladiator uh it reminded me of how like cool special of a thing we thought this was mm -hmm. you know like four or five years ago uh there was so much anticipation for it uh i took the roof off uh, nice. which was fun <laughs> uh, my son and i were in it like all weekend it was just like having a test vehicle like that I mean, it's kind of like why this job is so cool is you're like, hey, let's drive this green army truck all over. <laughs> uh, so it's cool. You know, it's you're up. We definitely kept the windows mostly down because it's summer and it just was kind of the right vibe for that. Again, with the roof off was really cool. The front roof panels. Funny story. I took the one passenger side panel off. I was like, you know what? It comes with this kind of carrying bag. I don't know if you've seen those mm -hmm. in other Jeeps. Uh, and I was like, you know what? I'll just put this in my living room. It'll be easier. That way I know where it is. Like the garage was kind of cluttered and I didn't want to zip it up and put it in the bag. I come out of the house and my son already has the second one off. Couldn't believe <laughs> That's it. That's awesome. Like, I, yeah. I mean, which shows you, Hey Jeep, you're doing something right that he can do that. And, uh, he's also freakishly stronger than I thought, <laughs> uh, cause they're fairly awkward. Uh, but he got it, you know, Grabbed that pedal right off the top and moved that in very smoothly. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, but honestly, it just reminded me that Jeeps are fun. Yeah. It really kind of made me want a Gladiator. So everybody was saying that don't do that. That's your think of an impulse buy. Don't do that. Uh, but I don't know. Am I wrong? Do I think you think a Gladiator would be a bad purchase if I could find a used one? No. I mean, um, you know, I recall that that midsize truck comparison we did a while back um and we had the gladiator off-road and it was just so much fun um it was a really good uh truck in its own right but then it does all the jeep things that other trucks just 
can't do. Like, like you said, taking the roof off and having it be easy to take the roof off. Um, and yeah, really good off-road. Um, yeah, we live in Michigan. That's something we have the opportunity to do. And if you uh, want to have a truck that you can drive around on a day-to-day basis and then yeah, go to the trail um, later that night if you want, <laughs> you know, and it, the the Gladiator will, will do it. Uh, and yeah, it, it looks cool. Um, it's Yeah, all the Jeep stuff, I think, is just what really sets it apart and makes it sort of special. Yeah, it, it's really something different and special in the midsize segment. You know, it's mm. uh, you get in there and you're absolutely in the Jeep. And I mean, I... I would be interested in daily driving a Honda Ridgeline as well for entirely different reasons. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, I like the Taco. I like the Colorado, uh, the Maverick down a segment, the Ranger in this segment. I really like almost everything in that segment, including the Frontier. Uh, but the Gladiator just manages to, like, lightly take one step to the side and be slightly different. Mm-hmm. Not really slightly, completely different while still playing in the segment. And it's a it's a big truck too. Yeah. Like it, you get in there and you're like, but it doesn't drive that big either, which I think is a, a good feature of it. Uh, in some ways I found it more agreeable than the Wrangler, which I, I think that might have to do just with the proportions of it. Maybe I don't know, but uh, you know, the downside of course is, you know, they're not cheap. Yeah. Uh, you open that back door and it's like an angle, like a sharp angle. I was like, how would I ever get my dog in here? I would have to get a <laughs> ramp for her. Uh, and even then, she'd hate every minute of it. Uh, so I don't know. It sounds like you're supporting my gladiator uh, ideas, but, you know, it's, yeah. it's tricky. Yeah, I mean, like you said, it, it compared to the Wrangler, it, I think it does drive um, a little better in a lot of situations. I think a lot of that's thanks to the longer wheelbase. Uh, but yeah. you know that's a little bit of, yeah. more of a hindrance off road, um, you know, with the breakover angle and whatnot. But I think that from for day to day driving, yeah, uh, that longer wheelbase just gives it a little calmer, uh, yeah, <laughs> ride, you know, and and just sort of uh, more predictable handling, I would say. Yeah, no, it's I I thought even the steering was noticeably uh, better as far as just even though it's like very much the same setup, just the way the whole the proportions, the dynamics. uh, Yeah, I don't know. Look at here. It looks like used ones are a couple years old are about 30. uh, Still get some miles on them. You know, it's it's not terrible. Mm -hmm. Uh, You're almost in some ways maybe look for a new one and hope to, I don't know. Cause they, they seem to hold their value pretty well. So. And, uh, you know, if you've got kids, uh, free rubber ducks. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. Car seat fit that in the second row pretty well. Like that was no problem. Yeah. You know, we just vented that window and, you know, great air passing through. Um, you know, it's it's like the perfect summer vehicle mm-hmm. in many ways. So, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun to drive. A lot of fun to drive. So, all right, let's move over to the BMW 5 Series that you dropped off at my house uh, with some eggs a few weeks back. <laughs> uh, this was this is a 530i X Drive, very nice vehicle, seventy one thousand dollars. We'll call it. Um, Pretty, pretty good. Uh, why don't I toss it over to you? I have some notes here. Um, it had the M Sport and premium packs, which mm-hmm. definitely dressed things up quite a bit. Um, yeah, I mean, what, what did you think of it? Um, I, I think BMW is taking sort of an interesting direction with its design. Um, I, I feel like it's dialed back in some of the ways where uh, there's less annoying and, and glaring um features that are there just to be there and and but the things that they are working with they put a little more um attention to like it's just you know the trim and and things like that and and where they place things um very comfortable car um all around uh not 
super exciting the the 530 powertrain um but definitely very very smooth and, and comfortable um i mean i guess i'd gotten out of some of their crazier uh bmws earlier in the summer so this one felt a little milder to me but um but still you know good to drive um especially for the size um uh, and yeah the tech uh better it's getting better <laughs> still uh uh sometimes pretty frustrating to use um but uh I, I like it. I, I, I feel like, I don't know, it wouldn't be my top pick, I don't think. But I don't know. What do, what do you think of it? I So I wrote down in my notes that uh, am I getting too old for BMWs, <laughs> which is a weird thing. I think it's, and the reason I wrote that down is, to me, it's like, I have this idea in my head of what the 5 Series is in this does not feel as much like the 5 Series yeah. does anymore. Like, when I think of the 5 Series, I go back to, like, 2010-ish. That, to me, is it. And now it's gotten so digital. Yeah. And the the design has gotten kind of weird, I think. It still looks like a BMW 5 Series, but it's generic enough that it no longer, I think, truly has that, like, Bimmer identity as much, at least not as much as those cars from 10, 15 years ago did. Yeah, it's different, uh, for sure. A little generic <laughs> is where I would go with it. Okay. Uh, you know, it handled pretty well, like, going through curves, you know. I definitely hit some expressway ramps, you know, it, the limits, I guess, such as they are. Um, it's good on the expressway. It's one of those, yeah. it's got that, like, German feel to it that it's, like, well screwed together. Uh, so that's, you know, good, good place for it. Uh, decent powertrain turbo four and eight speed automatic, but the 48 volt mild hybrid was, you know, okay. I, where I would put it in the segment is I definitely put it behind the E-Class. I think, yeah. you know, based on my recent experience with Mercedes cars, I feel like Mercedes does a better job with the tech and then making it work with the interior design and materials. And they're like they their sedans are even more styled up, but I think they they pull it off better. So mm -hmm. I guess in my mind, it's like the 2011 refresh. That's the idea of a modern five series. And like if you looked at it right now, that's kind of a dated look. But it also feels like they've moved enough away from that that they've moved into new territory. And I don't know if I like this new territory. So yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I don't think it feels quite as maybe luxurious as Mercedes, um, as the E Class. Yeah, and it doesn't. It definitely doesn't feel quite as sharp as you know, as the Audi. Um, I think that that's a more engaging car to drive. Um, but I don't know. I. Uh, I'm I'm looking forward to you know the next uh, M5 to come yeah. out and change my mind. <laughs> so. Yeah, maybe it will. I mean, that's sometimes what Halo cars can do is they get you excited about the rest of the portfolio. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this one just again, I really liked driving it, but it's just to me, it's not as competitive in the segment as it used to be, and it feels like they lost a little bit of their mojo, lost a little bit of their fastball here. Yeah, I can see that. I agree. Uh, so that is the five series. Let's talk about the uh, Chrysler Pacifica uh, P have. So the plug-in the hybrid. Uh, this is one that it's almost as long as the uh, since I've driven the the Gladiator. Uh, but this was pretty cool uh, as far as just being useful, fuel fuel efficient. Uh, it definitely Chrysler in recent years has kind of gone back to a more generic look. They've kind of lost that kind of like bubbly uh look that our long termer had uh pretty fuel efficient hugely roomy yeah uh reminded me how much i liked it it came somewhat charged so that was good uh byron heard associate editor swapped me the minivan for uh an sl 63s <laughs> so it was kind of funny uh the trade and i liked them both uh, i ended up having the mercedes for the weekend 
and then the minivan during the week. Um, but I mean, again, when you look at the segment, Chrysler is still very competitive here. Mm-hmm. You know, they, I think the inside's looking a little dated, yeah, for sure. but that's mainly because, I mean, it's just, it is what it is. It works. It's functional. It's attractive enough, but they don't really, they haven't brought like some sort of screen attack. Like you've seen other brands do into the Pacifica yet. And mainly because Stellantis hasn't really done that in any of their vehicles yeah. in the U S so, um, you know, it probably wouldn't hurt to pump some money into it and get a refresh, but it's still very competitive. You know, I think it's still like, depending on what you want, it could very much be the minivan for you. You know, if you want the hybrid, you should look at it. Plug in hybrid, you should look at it. Uh, you might prefer just from a design perspective that you like this better than say the Kia Carnival or the Honda Odyssey. Um, very comfortable interior, uh, plenty of screens, plenty of plugs. Uh, I'm sure your Nalgene bottle would fit in many different cup holders yeah. in here. Yeah, it's got a, but, n- those nice big cup holders. <laughs> yeah, I, I still like it very much. I think in the segment, it's there's nothing really truly bad in the minivan segment. Yeah. It's more like what do you want and what are you going to use it for and that type of thing. And it's the only domestic one. So, I mean, for some people, that's literally where their first and only stop. So there's that. Um, I, it's a strong player still. I, I don't know, think it's the, definitely the best, but it's it's in the conversation, you know. And there's a lot of things in that conversation, but I, I think it still has uh, most of its fastball. I, I'd be curious to see what would happen if uh, you know one of the other automakers introduced uh, plug-in hybrid uh, minivan. Um, you know, would we still look upon the, the Chrysler as fondly as we as we do? I think. Um, I think a lot of what makes this uh, attractive is is the plug-in hybrid powertrain. Although yeah. some people uh, <laughs> might be scared off by it, you know, it's been uh, yeah. subject of a lot of recalls and issues yeah. and, and whatnot. But um, you know, a, apart from that, uh, you know, it, it is it is quite old, but it it is also more classic looking than some of the others this is the, yeah. the design of of the sienna or the carnival might uh, be a little more than than what someone's looking for in their in their family minivan um but yeah i i i think it drives well i um it's definitely roomy you don't get the stow and go seats because of the battery underneath but uh, i don't know those seats, those captain's chairs are always, I've always got kids in them anyway. <laughs> so yeah. I'm not really, uh, I don't really need them to go away very often. Um, and yeah, still, still tons of space. You know, the, the, the rear seats to that sort of stowing maneuver. Um, and yeah, yeah, very comfortable. Um, yeah, the materials are, you know, they've, they've done a little bit to the interior to sort of, try and keep it fresh i don't think they've done enough um, yeah i'd agree with that but like especially like the gauges the ip that type of thing yeah that's like vintage chrysler uh literally uh but some of the materials though like the captain's chairs yeah great seating's really you comfortable know. yeah and it, a lot of the, the steering wheel you know is attractive and comfortable um you know, some people might not like some of the materials there but yeah um but yeah, I think a lot of what keeps it competitive is is the powertrain, because um, there's just that's your option if you want <laughs> if you want to yeah. plug in hybrid minivan, um, and that, yeah, I'd, I'd be really curious to see um, how it would compete if you know they did a little bit bigger update on it and then someone else came out with a, a plug in hybrid uh, to compete with it. Um, yeah, it might you know might have a little bit harder time. What I think is interesting is, I mean, two thoughts go right here would be Toyota because like they have yeah. Prius technology. I don't know, like is car journalists were always like, well, why don't they just do this? Yeah. And it's like, well, it's not maybe as adaptable, but it seems like they at least have the ideas that could be applied over to this. Oh, for so sure. So there's that. And, and with, uh, with Toyota's, uh, um, you know, plug-in hybrid system, you could, you know, I mean, 
they already offer all wheel drive, <laughs> um, yeah, which, yeah, which you true. don't get with the, with the Pacifica hybrid. Um, but yeah, a plug in hybrid, um, all wheel drive minivan. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, uh, here in the snow belt, a lot of people would, wouldn't mind that. It's funny when I think of the interior of like things like the Sienna, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's that can be pretty drab too. Like yes. thinking back to our long termer in the infotainment and the nav, like it's newer, but it's worse in my opinion than like what Chrysler is doing with UConnect and just their sort of dated interfaces. So uh, that's where this segment gets a little weird. It reminds me almost of like you know before the Bronco came back where it was like Wrangler and Forerunner and not really, but sort of Land Cruiser, like in that off-road segment. When there's not that much stuff in it, you can kind of get away by being yeah. old and people don't <laughs> always penalize you for it, you know, because maybe they like it or they're comfortable yeah. with it. Yeah. And that buyer is buying it for a reason. But uh, it's been a minute since I've been in the carnival. So, you know, that might change my thinking a little bit too. That's probably... Uh, that's a fresher take on the segment for obvious reasons mm-hmm. um but but yeah so uh why don't we talk some news here uh we touched on the frontier briefly i think we were talking about the gladiator uh, a little bit of an upgrade here uh new touch screen 12.3 inches higher tow rating truck uh buyers you know heads up yeah uh, so there's that i mean clearly nissan is now looking at the frontier is a key part of their portfolio because they are giving it normal updates. This isn't like the frontier of old. Right. They everybody <laughs> forgot it was there. You know, uh, remember we even asked Nissan for one for a compare, and they were like, "Ah, it's a value play. We're not looking at it to be competitively benchmarked." Yeah, and we were like, "Well, that's, it says a okay. lot." <laughs> yeah, that, that says a lot. And ironically, even in its sort of vintage state back then. I think people still kind of liked it for what it was. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the Tacoma back then even was still pretty old. Oh, not that sure, old, yeah. but so they are updating it. This is some updates for it. Uh, I generally like the Frontier. Uh, I've driven the new one a few times. Not this refreshed model yet, but I expect to probably this fall, maybe in the winter. Uh, some substantive upgrades that I think will, you know, again, keep it fresh. And I also kind of like uh, the approach Nissan took, just kind of look at this at a high level. It's definitely a blocky truck. You know, mm-hmm. they offer a lot of like, uh, like steel wheel options and like sort of, you know, this one in the press shots has black wheels. It looks just like straight up like a truck, which I think is, uh, that's a good thing. You know? Yeah. Uh, it's a tight cabin though. I remember last time I drove one. So like even tighter than the gladiator that I'm in, but, uh, yeah, how you feel about the frontier? Um, well, I, <laughs> I, I, it's it's hard to get super excited about it just because there's some good stuff out there. Um, but I think uh, you know, upping the the tow rating um, even by you know, I, did, I think about five hundred pounds. Um, it's now uh, seventy one fifty. Um, just doing that, I think, is you know, any any time you can um, in the pickup truck world uh, is uh, just makes it a lot more competitive than it would with any other vehicle. That's something people actually want to do with their trucks, even their their midsizers. Um, and I think, yeah, overall, I think it looks really great. Um, and I think, yeah, actually giving it some attention and keeping it fresh. Um, is is a really good idea um but yeah i haven't i haven't driven the updated one either so it's it's hard to say i'm not sure what i mean just to like look at the uh you know the mid-sized truck segment you know now that we're thinking about this with the gladiator the corolla i struggle i still would put the frontier is competitive now very good definitely the right truck for some people i would enjoy owning it wouldn't put it in the top three, uh, Frontier specifically. Uh, you know, in no particular order, I'm not sure where I'd end up. Gladiator would be in the top three because it's yeah. different and also because one's in my driveway and I will just say, hey, I'm a prisoner of the moment. <laughs> I like the Gladiator right now. No questions asked. Um, 
you know, the new GM trucks, the yeah. refreshes are very, very solid. I feel like I would go, uh, it's tough. I always was Colorado over Canyon, but now it feels like they've managed to take some of the Colorado's mojo and the Canyon seems to have some of that, uh, which is weird, but that's just how I'm currently sketching it out. And then you got to throw the taco in there mm-hmm. somewhere as well. So in no particular order, those are my top three with the Ranger maybe is fourth. What do you think? What's your look? Um, yeah, Colorado is, is really where, okay. I, where I would land. Um, just it's a tremendous truck. Um, it's, you know, it's, it, and the update did it a, a great service. Yeah. Um, but uh, I haven't driven the Canyon um, yet. So, uh, yeah. I, I could go, you know, either way on that, really, uh, but probably just the the Colorado, just because uh, I don't know. I've always liked the Colorado, um, but yeah, the the tacos up there, the the well, the taco hybrid too. I think it definitely yeah, kind of that's that you know powertrain is pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that would be compelling, and yeah, the, the Gladiator. It, it, it be, for me, it'd be between probably the Colorado and the, and the Gladiator. Um, okay, and I'd probably go Colorado. Ooh, that's interesting. And just because uh, I feel like I could justify this the where I spend the money a little better. Yeah, it's interesting too because again, I'm in a Gladiator. I feel like if I drove a Colorado tomorrow, I would probably come back and be like, okay. You could have your fun with this truck, but maybe the Gladiator isn't. You don't have to like totally go Gonzo. I need the the Jeep for this yeah. daily driving segment. But uh, yeah, it's a tough segment. There's a lot of good stuff in there, and unlike minivans, here you got to bring it, or you're gonna get yeah. like really left in the dust. I mean, everything in the segment is very good right now. Uh, I I like the Canyon personally. I don't. You know, it's it gets expensive. So I think if I were spending my own money, if I were in the market for a car, I would, you know, I probably Chevy is where I would land versus, you know, spending an extra few grand for that GMC stuff, which uh, you know, can go either way. Um if you were spending your own money, is this the pickup segment that you would think you would land in? You think you'd go I, midsize or I, yeah, I do, because I don't think the only reason for me to get a large truck would be just the cabin space. Yeah, I don't use the bed enough to say, hey, I need this. Uh, I just need a, a vehicle. So it's like. To me, I take that sort of crossover functionality and then make some compromises for the comfort because, hey, I'm having more fun driving this sort of truck. And then, you know, probably slap a ton of cover on it uh-huh. and enjoy the hell out of my you know school drop-offs and grocery pickups and anything else so i think for me in the segment and i realize i'm talking out of both sides of my mouth (laughs) at this point i would look it would be gladiator for sure would be one of the top two or three and then because again as i'm looking at the prices i would probably do uh probably colorado and then i i the only thing about the taco hybrid is it's expensive yeah I would be like, I like that a lot. I like the idea of it, but not like 40 plus grand enough to like it, like 46, 47. Like I, to me, I wouldn't spend that much money just to get like a commuter truck kind of thing. You know, Mm -hmm. to me, the Maverick is awesome. My family really liked the Maverick, but whatever they've driven it, they've enjoyed it. Um, But it's also small enough that I would probably still need room for something else, Mm -hmm. you know, especially that cabin gets pretty tight. Uh, So yeah, I guess for my personal spending money, it would be Colorado gladiator and taco in no particular order. How about you? Um, Man, you know, I would, I would, (laughs) I would go down size and I'd go with the Maverick. I would, I hear you. I I don't blame you. I would, you know, I'd wait for the, you know, all wheel drive hybrid to, to be on the lots that, maybe get the lobo that's maybe maybe <laughs> yeah uh, but yeah I, that's where i would land i honestly don't do a lot of truck stuff and when i do um you know i feel like uh most of the times i could get away with a with a smaller bed um yeah because sometimes i mean you can sort of stretch that if you have to put the yeah put the tailgate down and and 
get some ratchet straps and make sure everything's good and secure. Um, but I, you know, just, I think it's a value proposition and yeah, just economically, um, you know, in, in terms of driving it every day, uh, just having, and I, I like driving a, a smaller vehicle, um, as well. Uh, the, I just, I would, I would not want to drive. I would not want to daily drive a full size pickup. I don't think, um, unless it was something really cool, like, uh, like a Hummer. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah. The Hummer truck version is, is pretty cool for sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, you know, senior editor for all things electric. I definitely like the electric Silverado. It's, but it's also yeah. a big, it's a very big truck. It is. You know, and I don't, I mean, exactly like what you said, I don't need that much on a daily basis to like have a, that much bed space, you know? Yeah. I mean, you need to have a better cargo space. Uh, and I mean, I guess on the other hand, you drive a Gladiator, even in the base trim, and you can basically go to one of the toughest off-road settings and do it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So it's like, do you really, it's the same thing with like a Wrangler, you know, do you really need this capable of an off-road vehicle? But I don't know. I mean, cars are about emotion. You buy one that's fun and you like to drive it, you know? I mean. It's so true. And I would, oh man, if I had a, if I had a Maverick, I would be, you know, making the most of those DIY sort of functions and, and building stuff that would fit in the, you know, to hold cargo and tools and, and stuff in the bed. Uh, that'd be fun. Nice. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. All right, so close out the news section uh, with, uh, let's see, the GR Corolla gets some upgrades. And hey, to get an automatic transmission. That's kind of random. Uh, sure, okay. I mean, it takes away sort of like the, almost like the bragging right, you know, enthusiast yeah. thing. But, uh, you know, it makes sense to do this. It's a, it's a good eight-speed automatic. Uh, the stick, the six-speed stick shift uh, you know, obviously is the, it remains the standard, mm -hmm. you know, option, standard option. There we go. <laughs> um, but I mean, honestly, I, I hate to say this, but a lot of times you get in these hot hatches and you try, you try out the eight speed and you, you definitely lose that degree of interaction and engagement. But a lot of times the eight speeds or the dual clutches or whatever, one they choose to drop into these are so good and you're like oh wow it's it's almost like a cheat code and if you were to really put these cars at their limits you might want to make that trade-off i don't know it, it does make them a little more daily drivable for people who are not the hardest of enthusiasts so there is that thought i mean it's just a normal evolution uh this segment is so kind of small and weird that i think um you know it's news that they did add the automatic you mm -hmm. know but yeah Makes sense, I guess. Sure. I, I, I think, yeah, I agree that it makes sense. And, you know, in the sort of hot hatch world, um, some of the other things, like, I, I really liked the, the, the Kona N with the, with the automatic, um, you know, things like that. It's, if it depends, it, yeah, it depends on how you're going to be driving it. If you're going to be getting stuck in traffic a lot, um, you know, if you just have a, a terrible commute, it, it'll make a lot of sense. And it depends on, I mean, it depends on how it's going to interact with, with the motor and how it's going to sound and stuff when you, when you're shifting and whatnot. Um, I still, I still would probably pick the, the, uh, manual. I, well, I know I would pick the manual, Yeah, but, me too. but for sure, uh, I, I can see a case for the automatic. Nice. All right, well, that's the news, and that is the car reviews section. Uh, let's see. We've reached the point of the show where we often do uh, what we're eating, what we're drinking, mm -hmm. what we're cooking, what, uh, what's going on in your uh, sort of 5 o'clock, uh, you know, when 5 o'clock hits. Well, let's see. Uh, yesterday I ate, like, just the, one of the biggest burritos I've had okay. <laughs> in a long yeah. time. Um, we here we've got this place it used to be called big 10 burrito until they oh yeah, yeah they, been there. um and th there's one there's one uh east lansing too uh they've got the closest thing uh to like a california mission style burrito um okay. that, that i've been able good. to find here 
so I had that yesterday and I, um, we, we were actually at the pool. We ordered it and we were eating at the pool and I had, um, uh, a, a regular Budweiser, not the Bud Light, you okay. know, the, yeah. the Bud Heavy. Um, I, yeah. I bought some a, uh, a while back for a, a buddy of mine who, you know, was replacing our furnace. Um, okay. So something to have when we were, you know, wrapping up with that at the end of the day. Uh, so that's what he likes. And uh, yeah, sort of just takes me back. Uh, you know, something I used to drink. A long time ago um not not quite as you know crisp and refreshing as you'd want on a on a muggy august august afternoon um but i also had a um a founder's solid gold which oh those are great yeah just a really that's like a really good barbecue lager just um you know nice and light uh just tastes good with with any sort of food especially something like hot or spicy or smoky um just something to sort of <laughs> cleanse your palate a little bit um but yeah I, I haven't really been um you know seeking hunting the whales so to speak of, of the micro oh, okay. microbrew world lately i've still got um a bunch in my fridge um, that have been brewed by like friends and stuff <laughs> that I still have to get through that have just been, uh, I've been sort of, uh, I don't know, just not, not giving my fridge enough attention, I suppose. Okay. That sounds pretty good. I, uh, I had a, a Bam beer at uh, Jolly ah, Pumpkin. Yeah. Uh, we were out in Ann Arbor doing some tubing uh, of the Huron River uh recently nice. so that was fun with the hyundai elantra that we talked about uh we got the tubes in the car i uh, had to deflate them eventually and uh so yeah i if you're in michigan jolly pumpkin there's a few locations one in detroit one in ann arbor i think there's another one too traverse, but... traverse city i think oh yeah i've been to that one too yeah and then the you know they're um with uh grizzly peak and uh yeah and um Oh, I forget the name of their cider. Uh, mm -hmm. They make the Nomad cider, but anyway, they're yes. they're all part of the Null Group, um, and they have a they have a tap room out in Chelsea in, in like this, okay. um, like business park. <laughs> yeah, okay. it's, it's just like the weirdest place for a tap room. But you go there, and there's there's all sorts of good good beers to try, and yeah, the Jolly Pumpkin stuff, you know, tons tons of different sours and sort of farmhouse ales and. Lots of interesting yeasts and, and uh, yeah, some really good, really good stuff. Uh, they make, yeah, they, they have a ton of stuff that they make and, and they have, you know, limited releases all the time and a lot of them are really good and good, good food too. Um, I, I, yes. I haven't eaten at their restaurant in a while, but uh, I remember their pizzas were, were good and uh, they had some sandwiches that I really liked too and good appetizers. Yeah. They may have, I know you're a vegan, but they have a, uh, what was this? It was their chicken sandwich. Okay. My wife says that's the best chicken sandwich you can get anywhere. It's got kind of like a, uh, like a spicy slaw on top of it with a toasted bun. It's, it's quite nice. You know, it's really, you can split it, you know, it's big enough that it's, it's quite filling. Uh, I'll have and to they, let Kat know about that. Yeah, it's solid. It's solid. And they also have uh North peak, uh, brews at their, it, most no, of their establishments North Peak is too. what I was trying to think of earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was struggling with that too. And <laughs> the the other one that I sampled was Hooked. It's a blonde, which is just like a founder solid gold. So uh, nice. Uh, both very good, perfect sort of like mid afternoon lunch drinks, day drinking, if you will. It goes with the food. Uh, so it's that's yeah, pretty good, you know? Mm -hmm. I guess those are our recommendations. I guess if you're in the Midwest, maybe catching a football game, uh, you know, they're it's good places to go. Grab a bite and uh, hang out for a bit. So, uh, cool. Well, that's all the time we have this week. Uh, send us your Spend My Buddies. That's podcast at autoblog.com. Uh, if you enjoy the show, please give us five stars on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, be safe out there. We'll see you next week. 